Paul McCartney wrote this song when reggae and the free life became popular in the United Kingdom. The opening line, Desmond has a borrow at the marketplace, Desmond has a market stall, was a reference to Desmond Decker, the first internationally renowned Jamaican ska and reggae artist who had just completed a successful world tour. The catchphrase, Obladi, Oblada, life goes on, was coined by McCartney's friend, Nigerian conga player Jimmy Scott and Muakpur. Welcome to our Yellow Submarine channel. It would be an honor for you to take a few seconds to like and subscribe to our channel to keep supporting it. So let's get back to our primary goal of the video. Because of McCartney's shifting positions, the emotional distance between the Beatles reaches an irreconcilable level with Obladi Oblada. Paul claimed that he was free to record his songs in complete solitude, even those that required the group, such as Martha My Dear or Mother Nature's Son. At the same time, he wanted to dispose of it whenever he saw fit if he thought the piece would benefit. Thus, he forced his colleagues to dozens and dozens of attempts to register Obladi Oblada in the way he thought best. With such rehearsals, tempo changes, instrumentation changes, and integral remakes that not only Lennon but engineer Jeff Emmerich were exhausted. After 42 hours spent in the recording studio, John showed up in the studio bored and obviously under the influence of drugs, perhaps heroin, which he had started taking with Yoko Ono, playing with frenetic energy, the introduction of the piano, and leading the group in what turned out to be the final version of the piece, despite McCartney's last-ditch attempt to persuade his teammates to try again. Although the Beatles were opposed to making a single due to the antipathy developed for the piece, also documented by Savoy Truffle, it was soon discovered that McCartney was correct. Scott's Marmalade immediately recorded a cover, which became their first and only number one in the British charts. The truth is that the group's interests had shifted, and none of the four wanted to spend as much time as they had in the beginning on other people's compositions, especially for singles. Obladi Oblada's text is ridiculous and not very funny, but not significantly different from Lovely Rita, to which Lennon contributed enthusiastically. It is, however, confirmed that John's reluctance, like that of George and Ringo, has only been passed down by history, because not a drop of the resentment towards the song shines through their excellent and amusing performances, especially in the funny arm responses, leg after the verse, Desmond lets the children lend a hand. The saxophones also contributed decisively to the song's favor, but McCartney's bass rhythm pushed the piece towards the then-emerging reggae current. Paul McCartney heard the words Obladi Oblada through Jimmy Scott, a Nigerian musician who played at the Bag O' Nails Club, where Paul McCartney met Linda Eastman in Soho in London. Scott was a striking character, wearing bold African clothes and spouting catchphrases he'd learned in the evenings. His wife, Lucrezia, explains that Obladi Oblada is a phonetic translation of something his father used to say to him in the Yoruba language used by the Wari in Midwestern Nigeria. It had a special meaning that he never told anyone, she says. Even the Beatles didn't know what it meant. I once asked Paul what it meant, and he said he thought it was so-so, but that's not it. For Jimmy, it was like a philosophy he carried his whole life. So who is Jimmy Scott? Jimmy Anamagoran Scott Morikpour was born in Sapelli, Nigeria, and migrated to England in the mid-1950s to work in Soho's jazz clubs. In the 1960s, he worked with Georgie Fame and the Blue Flames, was a backup musician for Stevie Wonder on the 1965 tour of England, and later formed his own Obladi Oblada band. Scott also composed the score of some of the dance scenes in the film She by Robert Day, starring Ursula Andress, Peter Cushing, and Christopher Lee. According to Lucrezia, the expression became known because, at concerts, he would say, Obladi, the audience would shout, Oblada, and then Scott would reply, Life goes on. Paul's attitude of capturing the phrase and using it as inspiration for a song generated controversy. He was annoyed when I made the song with the expression because he wanted to get right. I was like, come on, Jimmy, it's just an expression. If you had written the song, you would have gotten a part, Paul told Playboy in 1984. During the recordings, which began in early July 1968 and lasted a few days, Paul made a mistake singing Desmond instead of Molly, stay at home and did his pretty face. As others liked the bug, the band kept the lyrics. On the July 5th tapings, Jimmy Scott had the honor of working with the Beatles for the only time. Lucrezia remembers being called to listen to a playback recording and taking an Obladi Oblada band letterhead to show Paul how to spell the phrase. Also, in 1968, Jimmy appeared on the Rolling Stones' Beggar's Banquet album and, in 1969, percussion on the song Sympathy for the Devil at the band's free concert in Hyde Park. Around the same time, he was arrested and taken to Brixton Prison on charges of failing to pay alimony to his ex-wife. 
die. While awaiting trial, Scott asked the police to contact the Beatles' office to see if Paul could pay off his monstrous debt. On the condition that the case against him be dropped over the song, McCartney settled Jimmy's score. In 1969, free of the obligations that took him to prison, Scott left England and only returned in 1973 to work on the Pyramid Arts Project in London, giving workshops on African music and percussion. Ten years later, in 1983, he joined the Bad Manners, where he stayed until his death in 1986. We had just toured the US and he caught pneumonia, recalls Doug Trendle, aka Buster Blood Vessel, frontman of the band. When he returned to England, he was searched by the immigration and customs. They left him naked for two hours. The next day, he was taken to the hospital and died. No one is quite sure how old he was because Scott lied about his age when he got his first British passport. He must have been 64 years old. Jimmy left at least 12 children from two marriages. Jimmy was an essentially musical man, charming, irresistible, and had the gift of talk. Lucrezia would later say, If life sometimes feels like a bore, it shouldn't be because the stories he told were an endless source of fun. Paul, who kept in touch with Jimmy, also contributed a quote for a show Scott's old band attended to raise funds for the Jimmy Scott Benevolent Fund. He was a great friend. In the 1960s, we met at various clubs and chatted. He had a very positive attitude towards life, and it was a pleasure to work with him. Let's get back to our primary goal. In the last verse, McCartney gets the words wrong, having Desmond do makeup for Molly while Molly goes to work at the market. It was kept because the other Beatles found it amusing. Among McCartney's songs that no one cannot know, Obla Di Obla Da is, with Yellow Submarine, the simplest structurally, limiting itself to using the chords provided by the system key. Without any exception and rigidly divided into three sections of eight bars each, with the chords constantly changing on the beat. Although the irregular duration, it is a shameless commercial song, which was too easy to predict a catchphrase's fate. But by Beatles standards, it was a mundane and unrepresentative piece. Lennon was recovering from his lysergic torpor and would no longer accept singles like Hello Goodbye and Lady Madonna without a fight. What do you think of the song? Do you think the rest of the band's reaction is justified? Or do you think they should have supported him more? Leave your comments below and don't forget to like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell for more updates on Beatles videos.